Hello there, welcome to or welcome back to Dave's Techway, whichever way the situation may be. Today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to overclock that CPU on the Azeroth B450 M Pro 4 motherboard. You will be going in the BIOS to do this, so I do need to throw this disclaimer out there. This is a tutorial or a how-to. If you decide to do this with your own components, you hold full responsibility if anything may happen. Now with the good legal stuff out of the way, there will be timestamps in the description below if you'd like to jump around the video a little bit. But I get these questions all the time, what parts make up the system? Leave in the comment section below if you want me to go through the parts of the system like this every time I do these kind of videos or not. But let me flip you over here and we'll go down through these components. Bright screen warning because it is pretty bright. Alright, and to start out we have the Azeroth V450 M Pro 4 motherboard. For the CPU in today's testing, we do have the Ryzen 5 3600, which boosts up to 4.2 GHz on its own. For the RAM, we have G-Skill Ripped Off 5 16 gig, 2 8 gig sticks for dual channel. It does go up to 3600 MHz. Graphical power, we have the Gigabyte Radeon RX 5600 XT Windforce card. For storage, we are running the Silicon Power 512 gig NVMe. The coolest system, we do have the Arago AT240, which is an all-in-one liquid cooler. Mine is black instead of this white one. If you want to know more about this particular cooler, there is more content on the channel. I'll put them up there in the corner for you. And my test bed is the Cooler Master Half XB Evo case. And for today's testing, I have the radiator in the front of this. M1 exhaust fan, so it's pretty indicative of what you would have on your setup if you were if you're running an AIO in the front of your case. And all side panels was left on it during testing. And to power everything, we have the EVGA 650 watt 80 plus gold certified marginal power supply. So then it's the parts that make up the system. So let's flip you over here and I'll show you how to get your processor overclocked on this particular motherboard. Alright, here we are on the desktop of the computer. We need to get a baseline to see where the numbers is around that stock. Like I mentioned, I do have the RAM overclocked to 3600 MHz speed. Just to prove that to you, I will show you here in, C, uh, in Task Manager here. The RAM is running 3600 MHz. We do have 16 gigs installed. Up here it's saying 16 gigabytes. So we got 16 gigs running 3600 MHz speed. Let's go ahead and pull up Hardware Info 64 here. That way we can watch what's going on with the processor. Alright, and the main things we're going to be looking at of course, it's going to be the temperatures right here on this top. We're going to also be looking up here at the core, uh, core clocks, which this thing should auto overclock to 4.2 gigahertz. Looks like it's already been hitting that. And you can see the voltage as well. It's up to 1.375 already. But to get our numbers, we're going to go ahead and pull up Center Bench Order 23 here. All right, we are going to run this for 10 minutes. I'm not going to make you guys sit through 10 minutes watching these little squares be made. I will uh, fast forward through it. I'll cut a lot of it out. So uh, let's get that started. We'll pull up Hardware Info 64 here. And I will see you guys in, uh, well, you guys will be in the blink of an eye. But for me, it'll be here about 10 minutes or so. And we'll look at some of these numbers and see how the CPU performed at stock settings. All right, there we go. We got our number in. It looks like on Center Bench Order 23 at stock speed, we got a score of 9,368. Let's go over here and see what the CPU is actually doing. Looks like we hit up to 1.394 volts on it. Looks like our CPU clock speeds did reach the 4.2 gigahertz throughout the test. Looks like our temperatures only got up to 70.1. So that, hey, that all-in-one is definitely doing its job. It's definitely keeping it nice and cool. So we should have plenty of room for uh, overclocking as far as temperatures go. So, all right, now let's get into the fun of it. Let's uh, get out of here since we've got our baseline numbers. And we'll get into this BIOS and show you how to get this thing overclocked. You go down your windows. This is Windows 10. You click on your windows, go to your power. Click your power, click the restart. Start tapping the delete key to get into your BIOS. All right, guys, here we are on the main page of the BIOS. You go over here to OC Tweaker. You stop two, I don't recommend moving or adjusting them at all. Them top two on this motherboard, that is for the bus speed. That's for the speed between your M.2 slots, your SATA ports, and all that. I normally don't mess with that. Main thing you want to do is come down here to this SOC U Core UC mode. This is the auto overclocking, so you want to disable that. Because you don't want that to try to override what you're going to do. 
Okay, next you need to come up here where it says CPU frequency and voltage, VID change. Put this down to manual. All right, there's your CPU frequency in megahertz. It's set to 3600. This processor will do up to 4.2 on its own. So let's try 4400. At 4400, that will put us up to 4.4 gigahertz if it's stable, because that is in megahertz. The voltage VID is how much voltage you can send to the CPU. AMD says that this thing, that you can do up to 1.45 volts. Me personally, I don't like running them that high. Especially if you're going to be running as an everyday overclock, you don't want to hit that limit. You want to keep it a little bit under that. So we're going to go with 1.35 volts. And this SOC voltage down here, we're going to leave that about the same. I, it maxes out at 1.55 volts, which that's what the motherboard's got set at. And there's your CPU overclocked. You can hit F10, which will bring up the save changes and exit. And you can hit yes if you want to. Or you can go up here in the top right, hit exit come down to save exit and save changes and exit and hit yes and let's see if this 4.4 gigahertz is going to be stable enough to get back into windows or not all right we're back in the windows here so it must be must be partially stable at least let's look in the task manager here make sure it's actually pushing that and it is set to 4.4 gigahertz okay so we'll get hardware info 64 pulled up so we'll go ahead and get cinebench r23 pulled up here there we go. We want this on a 10 minute time lapse here for the test of the throttle. We're going to hit go on the multi-core. Then we're going to pull hardware info back up here and watch our temperatures and the voltages and the same thing that we watched last time. See what we can get up to here. And if nothing happens, I'll be back after the 10 minute test. Alright y'all, there we go. It finished at 4.4 gigahertz. Look at the core voltage here, it's running at 1.343 volts right now, 1.35 volts. Looks like it did max up to 1.5 volts So The core clocks, they was running at 4.4. Okay, the temperatures on this with that 240 all-in-one only hit 76.4. So, since 4.4 was good, and look at the Cinebench score over here at the 4.4 gigahertz. It looked like we got a score of 10,218. That is actually a good bit above the 4.369 that we got at stock speed. So that's pretty good, pretty good bump in performance right there on Cinebench R23 for that overclock. I don't know if we'll be able to go and be able to hit 4.5, but we're going to go in here and find out and see what happens, I guess. All right, we're back into the BIOS. Here, back over here to OC Tweaker. So, uh, let's just go up here and uh, we'll back this out a little bit here. And we'll go with the 4500. And we're going to hit Enter. And we're going to go up here to Exit. Save Changes and Exit. And hit Yes. Let's see if it boots back into Windows. All right, it did boot back into Windows. And again, we're going to start up uh, Hardware Info. And we're going to click Run. There we go. So, let's start up Cinebench R23 here. We'll go ahead and get this started for the 10 minute test here. And we'll pull up hardware info where we can see what's going on with the chip. I'll be back in 10 minutes. It'll be a flash a blink of an eye for you, but for me, it'll be 10 minutes. All right, guys. Looks like it did finish at 4.5 gigahertz. Looking at the score, it went up to 10,460. Last score was 10,218, and the base score was 9,368. I'll go over here and look at hardware info, see what was going on, the core voltage maxed out at 1.35 volts so it didn't hit the 1.5 like it did last time your cores was setting at 4.5 gigahertz come down here to the temperatures and it looks like we hit about 78 is the max so i think we can kick this up quite a bit more so let's go back in the bios and we will see what we can do i think we're going to go up a little bit more than 100 megahertz this time but we'll see what we can get at, uh see if we can push a little bit further this time all right there we go and like it shows right there, it's showing 4500 megahertz. So let's go into the OC tweaker here. And we will pop this up to uh, take F5 out. We say 4800 megahertz, which is 4.8 gigahertz. Now I hit F10, save and exit. Get back into Windows here if it can or if it will. And it looks like it's booting back up at 4.8 gigahertz. All right, guys, I don't think that quite did it at 4.8. I think it's a little much. It seems to have froze up completely. So uh, let me reset the BIOS here and uh, throw the BIOS, and we'll try a little bit less. All right, guys, the uh, 48 wasn't stable. I had to reset the BIOS. 
Okay, we'll uh, reload the XMP profile here. We will turn off the auto overclocking. We will change this to manual again. 48 wasn't stable. It wasn't in boot. So we'll go with 4700. Put the voltage back up to 1.35 volts. There we go. We're going to leave that on auto because that's what we have been running. Hit save and exit. And see if 4700 will boot. That is into a problem. That 4700 ain't going to be able to do it either. So let me reset the BIOS again. All right, guys, 4.7 wasn't stable. So I guess we'll just uh, take up the 4.6 and give that a try. 46, because 47 wasn't stable. We'll put this back up to 1.35. There we go. We're going to hit F10, save and exit, and hit yes. Let's see if we'll boot up in uh, 4.6 gigahertz. All right, well, now we're booting up. Let's see if it actually took the 4.6 or not. Go into task manager here. Uh, CPU setting at 4.6 gigahertz. All right, so let's pull up hardware info 64. Then we'll pull up uh, center bench 23. We'll do another 10 minute test. I'll be back in 10 minutes if nothing happens. If something happens, I will try to catch it for you. Nope. Ain't going to happen. I guess the 4.5 was about as good as we're going to get out of this CPU. So uh, let me get reset up here and uh, we'll run down through the numbers and I'll come up with a conclusion to the video for you guys. Alright, this is the way you get that CPU overclocked on this ASRock motherboard. As you can tell, I only got about 300 megahertz out of mine over top of what it would boost up to on its own. Leave down in that comment section below if you think that's really worth overclocking or not. If you think that little bit of performance gain is worth the time of doing it. Talking about the results, let's flip you over and we'll take a look at these Cinebench R23 results. Here we are, we are looking at the results that I got. And if you noticed in the video, I did notice it at the time when I was doing the recording. I noticed it when I was doing the editing. For some reason, when I was doing the 4.4 and the 4.5 test, the XMP wasn't enabled. If the XMP would have been enabled like I did on the original run. But let's look at the scores anyways. Out of stock, out of the box, we had 9,368. The 4.4, we ended up with a 10,218. And with the 4.5 gigahertz, we ended up with a 10,460 score. And that means between the best I could get on my processor, which is about 300 megahertz overclock, we went up by 1,092 points. That's a pretty good little boost in Cinebench R23. But again, I wish I would have caught that uh, XMP being disabled in the last two runs, but I did miss that on my testing. I want to apologize for that, but the, I got to stick with these numbers because I done tore the system back apart. So if you like this kind of content, go down and give me a like. If not, there's that dislike button. You can tap that one twice if you like to. There's also that comment section below. I type back to everybody. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you really like this kind of content, maybe hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell on. That way you're notified next time I put out a video or I go live here on YouTube. There's also links in the description below for my Instagram and Twitter. I don't kill your inbox, but I do put up photos of new stuff I have coming in. Or if there's any change with my live stream that I do here on Saturday mornings, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the U.S., where you also get that information. With all that being said, you all have a good day. And I'll see you in the next video or live stream.